This is session two of the Chester Step Test and what we're going to deal with in this session is aerobic capacity or VO2 max. Aerobic capacity is really a measure of cardiorespiratory or aerobic fitness and it's the ability to perform large muscle dynamic moderate to high intensity exercise for prolonged periods. And really aerobic fitness, a good level of aerobic fitness, is strongly related to health related fitness. So a poor level of aerobic fitness would show an increased risk of early death and particularly chronic illness, whereas a good level will show a reduced risk of early death and chronic illness. And aerobic capacity, or VO2 max, is the criterion measure for aerobic fitness. So what does VO2 max look like? Well, here is one of our subjects on a laboratory all wired up for um, oxygen uptake, carbon dioxide, respiration, and in this particular instance, for ECG and for blood pressure. Um, not always do we take ECGs and blood pressure, but the most important part of this would be a heart rate monitor and the oxygen um, analysis and carbon dioxide analysis kit that goes along with the face mask. So here's a subject running on the treadmill. Um, the start would be pretty slow after a gentle warm-up. The various, various protocols that people use, uh, the bulky protocol, the Bruce protocol, uh, in our particular laboratories, we tend to individualize what we call ramp protocols. So if we had a very fit runner, then clearly he or she would be running at a totally different speed to a beginner type exerciser who we could still uh, ascertain VO2 max, but at totally different um, uh, protocols. So what actually is VO2 max? Well, it's the maximum amount of oxygen the body can take in, in other words, lungs, transport, heart efficiency and circulation, and use the ability of the muscles to extract the oxygen and use for energy. And that is otherwise called aerobic capacity. The units that we use can either be litres a minute, but more conventionally, so we can compare individuals uh, and genders and put these on a normative database, we would use millilitres of oxygen per kilogram per minute. So again, VO2 max is the highest rate of oxygen uptake during maximal exhaustive exercise, and it's our best objective measure of aerobic fitness. So this would be again typically how we would measure it without all the ECG and blood pressure kit. Here's one of our subjects on the treadmill that's been slowly increased in gradient and in speed and the point at which both heart rate and oxygen uptake being monitored continuously throughout begin to level off would be the point at which we would likely pull off the subject unless he or she voluntarily pressed the button and said that's about me done, that's about my maximum. In exercise physiology there are various criteria that scientists would use like something called respiratory exchange ratio of 1.1 plus, maximum heart rate and a levelling off of VO2. Several other criteria depending on which laboratory and which protocols are, are being used. What we do know, in essence, is that as the subject exercises, then if we keep the same workload for approximately two to three minutes, in other words, to let the heart rate and oxygen uptake um, level off, then increase the workload, increase the workload, increase the workload, then we see a direct relationship, linear relationship, between oxygen consumption and exercise intensity. At VO2 max point, uh, it begins to level off and we know the subject has reached their maximum. We've then got norms of aerobic capacity where we can look at norms for males by age group, 15 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. And the fitness rating, excellent, good, average, and below average, and poor. These are norms that I developed some time ago now in the 1990s, but are still, I think, fairly relevant. 
with the large databases that we were collecting, what I was anxious to do was, was divide up the normative database in terms of percentiles. So if you are in the excellent category for your age, then you are in the top 20% of your age group. If you're in the good fitness category, you're in the 60 to 80%, a B if you like. If you're average, a C, then you're in the 40 to 60th percentile. And if you're in the below average category, in other words, a D, then you're in the 40th to the 20th percentile. And if you're in the lowest category, a poor, in other words, an E, you're in the lowest 20th percentile for your age and gender. Similar norms for females, again, 15 to 19, right through to 60 to 65 and uh, beyond if we were testing older individuals. What's interesting, I think, is to look uh, and compare the two sets. So we can see if we look at, say, a 30 to 39-year-old male who is in excellent condition, they would achieve um, an aerobic capacity of at least 50 mils per kilogram. Whereas, comparably, for a female, uh, her result would be 46 mils per kilogram, 30 to 39-year-old, and that would be round about 10% lower. So females generally, as a population, would be around about 10% lower than the average males. And this is largely um, dimensional, that women tend to have smaller hearts, smaller muscle groups, um, lung capacities, uh, etc. So those would be typical norms. When we've done the assessment of VO2 max, aerobic capacity, we can put that onto a chart to identify where the subject would be. Just to give you an idea of the full range, uh, an athletic um, uh, middle distance runner, endurance runner, would be well into the 60 mils per kilogram, uh, even higher, 70 and with really exceptional cases, 80 millilitres per kilogram um, of uh, uh, oxygen uptake. At the other end, at the bottom end, when we're testing patients, say cardiac patients, pulmonary patients, patients with clinical issues, then we can often get capacities which are less than 30 and sometimes less than 20. So that gives you a concept, an idea of norms of aerobic capacity and how we can use them then to um, exercise prescribe and to look at monitoring change in performance. So as I mentioned earlier, VO2 max does decrease with age for a whole raft of, of circulatory uh, pulmonary uh, musculoskeletal reasons uh, but as we age you can see that the graphs get a little bit closer together in the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s so the difference between males and females for VO2 max is not quite as pronounced as in the 20s, 30s, 40s age group. However there is still a decrease but what we do know is that with exercise training, we can significantly offset that decrease due to natural wear and tear, if you like, natural decrease in, in, uh, in VO2 max. But why test fitness in the first place? Well, just to summarize, there are numerous examples of us testing fitness in clinic scenarios with a patient, um, offering advice to somebody who's been tested and giving health promotion advice, a firefighter having a step test in a clinic there on a 12-inch step, um, larger numbers, a different type of test, that's called the multi-stage shuttle run test, and these are police officer recruits, um, so the advantage of that type of test is numbers, we can test large numbers. A firefighter on a treadmill, looking at the oxygen cost and respiratory parameters around a variety of firefighting tasks. And then an example of somebody in uh, a gym, just on the treadmill. Uh, again, we can test fitness these days uh, with very, very little, um, little equipment. So how would we use it? Well, certainly as a health risk indicator. As I mentioned earlier, we know that a low level of fitness is strongly associated with poor health risk illness and chronic disease. 
It gives us a fitness baseline, so we have an idea where the individual is, so we can prescribe exercise to hopefully improve their health and their well-being. We can monitor change, we can monitor improvements over weeks, months, years, and very useful as an educational tool to explain to individuals why exercise is so important and as a motivational tool once people can see their results improve. And also we can use it in the fit for work context. Firefighters, police officers, commercial divers, a whole raft of people for whom their work is physically very demanding would need to be in good nick and we can identify the levels very often that they need to be in in order to be fit for work. Assessment of aerobic fitness then, a variety of tests. The gold standard we normally reckon is the VO2 max test, conventionally done on a treadmill but can be done on other ergometers like a cycle ergometer, but the treadmill VO2 max is the most commonly used. But then outside of the laboratory we have mile and a half run, we have the one mile walk, we have a two kilometer walk, we have cycle ergometer, we have a rowing ergometer, we have a stepper, and we have a shuttle run, the 20 meter bleep test. So all these are different tests that can be used with different types of people, community uh, scenarios uh, outside of the laboratory. Chest a treadmill test, which requires obviously a, a treadmill, and then of course the chest a step test. 